Today I'd like to do some kind of an update on my wardrobe. So in 2021, I discovered or rediscovered six items that were not part of my daily or even weekly routine, but became part or actually real staples in my wardrobe. And I will start with item number one, is the one I'm wearing in front of you. Uh, it's a cardigan. So a cardigan is normally, it's the same in front and I think all over the world, it's more uh, looked upon as an extra warmth uh, piece of garment, which comes normally with sleeves. Uh, this is the classic cardigan. I remember my mother said to me, mm, it's cold outside, uh, son, I'm going to put, je vais mettre mon cardigan. I'm going to put my little cardigan for extra warmth. So what I'm speaking of today is this piece of clothing, which is, by the way, 100% of beautiful cashmere. So let's say it's a cardigan vest or a cardigan waistcoat. What is interesting in this item is that it is knitwear, but it goes perfectly uh, under a suit, or even better under a sport jacket, uh, or just like that, something more casual, just above a shirt without any tie, and it gives immediately some kind of sartorial feeling to your outfit. Um, I use it a lot, and I must admit, I use it much more than I imagined in the first place. And specifically when with Sonia, we have some visitors. People, uh, we're not supposed to come here, maybe we have one or two hours to prepare ourselves, uh, and we are not ready. So instead of, you know, choosing an outfit and composing, I just put on a white shirt, this cardigan, uh, a pair of um, trousers, classic trousers, beautiful pair of shoes and I'm good to go and I'm good to receive. Also, one advice, sometimes it's the reverse. Somebody's visiting us and we are afraid to be overdressed. Remember that it's all about balance, the sartorial world. And when we speak about education, I think this is one of the most educated attitude to have as a person. When you receive somebody at your home or when you visit somebody, be sure that you are not overdressed. This is a mistake that many uh, beginners in the tutorial world make. Don't be overdressed. This is very important. And on the reverse is true too. The reverse is true too. Don't be underdressed. If you go to an event with a dress code, you have to respect this dress code. But it's something you understand that when you think about not being overdressed or being underdressed, what do you do at the end? You are trying to put people around you even if it's a professional situation or in a personal situation or in a family situation or any kind of situation or occasion, you try to put people around you at ease. Thinking and dressing according to the occasions you're going to have to be in in your day is the definition of elegance for us. And it's nothing selfish. On the contrary, it forces you to think about other people. Coming back now to this sleeveless cardigan. Uh, I've been wearing this cardigan so much more than I expected under a suit, under a jacket, over a little shirt like that, simply to receive people. This is my go-to. It's my, you know, this works with almost everything from a jeans to a flannel pants, with or without a jacket, with a tie, with an ascot. This is beautiful. The one person who really inspired me on that was Lorenzo Cifodelli because I've seen him many, many times with sleeveless knitwear cardigan cardigans like that uh, in Kashmir most, most of the time. And I, I always said to myself, wow, that's very stylish. But I never had the reflex to, to have one. Also, my wife, she's very good at mixing vests with different outfits. And those two influences uh, finally um, draw me inside this sleeveless cardigan crowd. And this is what I'm wearing today. By the way, little promotion. We did this very cardigan with our friend uh, Yeo Sal in Singapore. This is a full cashmere cardigan. We'll give you the link if you want to have the same one. There's still some exemplaries available. Why is it uh, interesting for you maybe to look at this is because the price is amazing. I think it's less uh, 219 euros. Uh, I don't know what it makes in dollars, maybe $240, something like that. Uh, okay, you will have probably to add a little bit of customs, maybe 15 to 20 bucks. But just to let you know, this quality of cashmere and the quality of what I'm wearing today, 
uh, is normally sold twice or even three times the price, depending on the brand, of course, that you put on this cardigan. So, first item that became a staple in my wardrobe, it's a sleeveless cardigan knitwear uh, in cashmere for this one that I wear in an infinite possibility of situation from very casual to very formal. That was my discovery number one in 2021. Discovery number two, while well, it's very close to this one, we still uh, stay in the knitwear uh, environment. And we also did a special collaboration with the same people at Yeosal in Singapore uh, to create my favorite um, knitwear, my favorite sweater. I tried many different sweaters. Uh, as you know, and if you are following us since a long time or, or, or more recently, um, I can say I'm wearing shirts uh, with my jackets and suit, probably 90% of the time, 95. Before 2021, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, I would rarely go for a turtleneck or a mock neck because I didn't feel like it was uh, chic enough for me. I didn't feel it was elegant enough. And I always, I, I'm, um, I'm not sure because we are recording our, um, episode number 120, probably something like that. Uh, I'm not even, I don't even remember how many episodes we recorded. I don't have the, the I know it's if we mix the French and the English channel, we're close to 200 episodes. So I may have tackled this subject already, and you may have heard me in the past advocating against sweaters and knitwear. But today, and specifically this year, I'm going to go, uh, show you some pictures I discovered the incredible comfort of um, cashmere sweater and the incredible freedom almost it can provide to you. And uh, I was afraid that it will a little bit downgrade my uh, look or the way I look uh, in classic style, of course. And I discovered little by little that it was not true. And the beautiful uh, sweater, some people prefer turtleneck. Uh, personally, I prefer the mock neck so the difference is that the turtleneck, you have to roll it like that, and it creates for me something big. I, I, I can understand people love that, no problem with me. My, um, I prefer the mock neck, which is slightly smaller. It's not a crew neck, it's a mock neck. It's in between, and it's beautiful because you can wear it under a suit. Uh, I have a picture of myself wearing this kind of sweater with a uh, double-breasted by Cifonelli. Uh, with a Drago Super 160, if I remember well, we're going to show you this picture. It works. It works also under a blazer. It works also just above a denim with a nice scarf. Okay, the one um, um, I present to you now with these pictures is the collaboration we still have uh, with Yeosal in Singapore. And you would not believe the price. I mean, it's, I think it's 219, it's not even 220. So the price is incredible for this quality of cashmere. So if you are interested in buying this, you can buy it here or you can find it anywhere, you know, in any place. I just attract your attention on the fact that we may have currently with Yeosal the best value on the market for a real 100% high quality sweater in 100% cashmere. One last thing, um, cashmere is great. It has only one downside. It's addictive. When you start, I remember offering my wife and my mother some cashmere sweater. And cashmere sweater, you can directly feel on the skin the difference. I remember my mother, she's in her early 80s, mid 80s now, and she was, when she was wearing her cashmere sweater, she was doing this constantly because cashmere brings you something um, very delicate on the skin and it's extremely easy um, and agreeable to wear. So that's my item number two, a mock neck in cashmere, 100% cashmere, and that became a staple. And between you and me, it's easy when you have to go and catch a baguette or a camembert, we're in France. Uh, you just put this on with a pea coat, a scarf, good to go, and you're still stylish. That was my discovery number two. Discovery number three may surprise a few of you, because if you know my wife, that I remind you is the co-host of this show, uh, the co-producer with our friend Cosmas Kokaris, so I'm alone today 
but it's a good occasion for me to pay her a tribute that uh, without her, this channel will not be what it is. Back to the suspender, this is why I was speaking about Sonia. Sonia, she's a super fan of suspenders. I will not go into details, but for the woman, believe me, a nice pair of suspenders brings something really funky, really different, really, I don't know how to explain it. It gives some kind of a flair that is beautiful, but even for me. So, you may think that I'm in the sartorial world since more than 15 years now, and I have a lot of bespoke suits, and then a lot of people have the idea that Jacome, as I, I don't wear belts, well, once again, I have nothing against belt makers. Some of them are great, but I usually don't wear belts. I don't really like that. I prefer, um, how do you say in English? Side adjusters, thank you, Sonia. Side adjusters, because I think it's more, it's more beautiful. It doesn't cut the silhouette into, but once again, once again, I have nothing against beautiful belts. So some of you may think that I'm very accustomed to wearing um, braces. Actually, well, it happened to me to wear braces in the past, but I really rediscovered in 2021 uh, the joy of braces and suspenders. And I will explain to you why it's quite obvious because I lost a lot of weight uh, in January 2021, starting from January, so it's almost a year, more than a year now, and I stayed at the same weight. I manage uh, with a simple diet, you know, that is to say we just eat normal healthy food uh, to keep the same thing. And so when you have a full wardrobe, and even if you have the best tailors of the world around you, specifically during lockdown, uh, most of them were closed, it was impossible for me to have my uh, pants altered and literally ladies and gentlemen Sonia is here to testify I was literally losing my trousers when I was walking so I had no other choice than to put on some suspenders and it was like a new revelation to me I said oh my gosh how could I forget how agreeable it is to wear suspenders because okay some of my Pants are still way too big, even with suspenders. But most of them, with um, you know the side adjusters, you know pull to the maximum and suspenders, I can make some trousers work, even if they are not exactly my size anymore. Okay, don't worry. There are we are. I'm in the process to have them reshaped for my side. But it allowed me to rediscover suspenders, and suspenders are an amazing accessory. First of all, it's practical and functional because when you have this problem, uh, it helps a lot. And when you have also the, the reverse problem, if you have a little bit of belly, but you still want to have some high-waisted trousers, you have no other option than suspenders. So it's practical, but at the same time, it is an incredibly fun object. Um, uh, well, I must confess, I only know one maker of suspenders, uh, well, we did never really look for another one, is Albert Thurston, very famous braces maker, specialist in the UK, creating suspenders for private label, labels, like practically all the suspenders you find in menswear shop, no matter the brand, are made by Albert Thurston. Uh, it's a UK company. And it's so fun. You have different kind of size, different material, and mostly an infinite possibilities of patterns. You can do paisley, you can do monochrome, you can do many things, and you have different, different width. This is a very interesting um, garment. There's one thing that I adore, and that my friend Margrio um, uh, told to me. Uh, he always said, Marx, that when you wear a tie with a dress shirt, um, most of the time uh, is very uncomfortable when you have to remove the jacket. And this is why, by the way, he loves vests. You know, take this example, when I remove the jacket, I'm still totally fine because I have a vest. But imagine you're wearing um, a tie and a beautiful business shirt with your suit and for whatever reason, it's really hot. You, uh, normally you keep your jacket, but for whatever reason you decide to remove it because it's unbreathable. Well, at this very moment, if you don't have suspenders, 
all of a sudden it creates some kind of an unbalance. Just a tie with a shirt can be a little bit, you can feel a little bit naked around. But if you have a beautiful pair of suspenders, all of a sudden, not only you keep your level of exigence with your own self, but it comes and it dresses the empty spaces here, and it's plainly beautiful. And believe it or not, well, I'm sure you're going to believe me, you're going to have instant commentaries. Oh, wow, you are wearing braces or suspenders. You know why? Because most of the time, for example, when you wear a double-breasted jacket or suit, nobody will notice you. you have suspenders because they are hidden. In this way, they are used only for their practicality. Uh, where under a single breasted, you can show them a little bit. But so it's a very important um, accessory that is either uh, at the same time practical and aesthetically formidable. Okay, um, it's better to wear them with the little bridles, how you call that? The bridles, I would say the small straps that you have, normally they are in leather, and you put them inside because you have buttons inside your pants that are uh, custom made to wear suspenders. But now the suspenders are also, uh, they are all sold um, with the, the clip. So you can clip them or you can attach them. Both systems are sold in one pair of suspenders. I must confess to you that, okay, the best way to wear it is when you you use the button inside of your trousers, but sometimes, as happened to me, uh, you know, some of my wardrobe has belt loops. I don't know why, actually, because I don't wear belts or side adjusters, but uh, I was losing so much, so much weight that it, they didn't work anymore. So I had to wear suspenders, but I didn't have buttons inside. So I just used the clip. Okay, it may sound a little bit blasphematory to the purists, but at the end, it works also very well. Of course, the best, and it's not complicated, uh, is to, put, to, to ask your local tailor or even alteration tailor or your mom or your wife or your grandmother or whoever knows how to sew a simple button to put it inside. It has to be sewn very strongly because it has a little bit of traction, you know, it's, it's expanding, but still it's easy to do. One last thing, and what I wanted to share with you about that is that if you never tried suspenders, Please try them in 2022. It's not a big investment. It's not expensive. You can have a lot of fun with it. And believe me, you're going to harvest a lot of compliments because it's instant style. You hear me? Instant style. Whether you wear a tie or not, whether you wear a jacket or not, whether it's instantly stylish. Just avoid the big Donald Duck and Mickey's and um, Dumbo and all this thing because this is not tutorial. This is called circus, but that's another story by itself. Uh, item number four that I want to speak about, I'm not going to spend a long time on it because we did a full show on this. It's my, not discovery, of course not, because I've been young, uh, yeah. Fortunately, I've been young in the past. So of course I knew what sneakers, or we call it basket in French, or trainers. I've been wearing them when I was a young boy, like everybody. But since I was an adult, and more specifically since I'm passionate about shoes, as you know, our last book, this is the French edition, uh, is on shoes with Sonia, uh, I, was, I literally gave up on pretty much on sneakers. So, because I didn't feel it could be a good compliment to my suit or my sport jackets. And then, after listening to Christophe Corté from Atelier du Tranché, uh, after listening to my friends at Altan, after looking at the work of Colin Cour, Alexis Lafont in Paris, they finally uh, convinced me to give it a try. And I must admit that I really appreciated this a lot. Okay. My only limit is that I will not, I, I, I was about to say never, but, well, we can, ne can never say never, of course, but I will probably never, is that okay with probably? I will probably never wear a pair of sneakers with a suit. I think it doesn't really go well together because it's not the same spirit. Even with a linen, wrinkled linen suit, you know, during the summer, I don't feel like it 
you know, I, I prefer a beautiful pair of loafers without socks, for example, but uh, with a chino, uh, with a classic cotton pant, or an even better with a pair of denims, beautiful denims, with a sport jacket. Uh, for example, I wear now my Alton sneakers with my um, um, sport jacket from Pino Peluzzo, uh, or my uh, pea coat from Sartoria Sabino. It works perfectly. Jeans, beautiful cashmere pea coat, a scarf, and this pair of leather sneakers. It works very well. Well, somebody will say everything's dead. Giacomo is speaking about sneakers. The world is, is upside down. Everybody's walking on the head. And it's the end of the sartorial mysticism. It's not. It's just that we can't be immune to the environment around us. And more, moreover, we can't be immune to the fact that our favorite shoemakers, whether they are Corte or Berluti, and even the biggest classic shoemaker in the world, all of them survive today because they make sneakers. And then, of course, there are sneakers and sneakers. You can have crap. And me, I didn't want to go for Nike, Jordan, Air, whatever, because it's not my style. It's for younger people, in my opinion. So, uh, but I discovered that the sartorial world infused the world of sneakers because everybody's looking for comfort, even if, well, as a side note, a bespoke beautiful Oxford is sometimes more comfortable than a pair of trainers, end of bracket. But uh, it means that the sneakers are now more and more interesting. And you can find sneakers with patina, with real leather, sometimes with exotic skin. So it's a whole universe that is opening. Uh, Christophe Cortet, for example, from Atelier du Tranché is uh, launching a range of uh, beautiful sneakers made by a shoemaker. And then we have Maison Clairvoy in France, beautiful atelier. Uh, that is uh, owned by the Moulin Rouge. If you love Paris, you know the Moulin Rouge, this famous cabaret. You know why they have a shoe? This is so friend. They have a shoe-making atelier. Originally, it was for the Moulin Rouge, only for the dancers of the Moulin Rouge uh, Revue. And uh, you can imagine the level of craftsmanship they have because they have to craft shoes for men and women who are going to dance three hours on stage. So believe me, they have to be good at comfort. So these people are creating by hand, made to measure, made to order, fantastic sneakers. So you see, this world is just evolving. And I must admit, I didn't surrender to that. I maybe wear sneakers 20% of the time, maybe less. I'm still much more in love with my Oxfords and Derbys, uh, but 2021 was my first steps in life with sneakers. I mean, in my sartorial adult life. That was uh, number four, item number four. Now we move to item number five. It may surprise you once again. This is the first time, alleluia, it's done. I possess a tweed sport jacket, or to be more precise, a jacket, sport jacket made out of Harris tweed fabric. Once again, it may surprise you as we produced uh, and released two years ago uh, quite a substantial documentary uh, on Harris Street Hebrides. And so, uh, why didn't I try it? Well, I had some tweed, of course some cuts of um, cut length of tweed, but I never had the impulsion of doing something with it. It's, it's very strange how it happened. I saw the work of Pino Peluzzo, my friend Pino Peluzzo from Napoli, great tailor, bespoke tailor. And uh, I saw it started to work with some bold patterns, um, Harris tweed. And uh, I said, okay, well, that's very interesting. This is the first time I like to give it a try. Even if it can sound to you like a sartorial oxymoron, Harris Tweed with a Neapolitan tailor. This doesn't seem to go very well together because Neapolitan tailor, they are well-known and acclaimed around the world for the fact that they are the best of crafting second skin jacket, very light. You know, in Napoli, Italy, it doesn't, it's not really cold. We've been there with Sonia uh, more than a year for our book, The Italian Gentleman Inside the City. We can tell you the only month which is difficult is February, more or less, and we were, it was freezing cold. Why? Because it was Napoli. You're not used to have a, just a normal 
fresh weather. It used to be more hot. So anyway, it sounds like a sartorial oxymoron that a Neapolitan tailor would use Harry Street for a jacket, but he did it, and the result is just absolutely stunning. It became instantly one of my favorite jackets. And my first experience with Harris Tweed is a tremendous experience because I can tell you that this jacket, uh, even if I don't really maintain it, it is the kind of jacket you, you don't have to be so cautious with it all. Okay, we are cautious. We, we, being cautious in the sartorial universe means buy yourself proper hangers. That's all it means, more or less. And then brush a little bit the jacket if it's dusty, and that's it, you know? But this material, not only, for me, I had the consideration it was a little bit too thick, a little bit rustic, not really classy, too much countryside, you know, gentleman farmer for my taste and my style. But I discovered it was immensely comfortable, but the most thing is so robust, it's so um, um, solid, it's so strong, that I believe if I take normal care of this jacket, uh, I may, it may survive me. Uh, I'm pretty sure this jacket will survive me. Uh, so it's a, it's a buy for probably 30, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years even. I know there's a lot of people loving Harris Tweed, so I wanted to say to you, I'm in now for the first time in my life, and I'm going to continue on this path because I think on the top of that, that um, uh, the designers, as for example, Harris Tweed Hebrides, which is uh, the people we know, uh, they really uh, put a lot of efforts in the design. And now, because the only downside I, I was seeing on the tweed before this jacket was, I think that the, the patterns were very classic. You know, this green, a little bit hunting uh, pattern was a little bit too classic for me. Or the cognac window pane, you know, very classic for a tweed. But this one, I love it because it's bold, it's beautiful. Or a plain one like solid color like uh, Sonia, some kind of cream is beautiful. So, okay, you understand uh, I'm sold on tweed. It took me uh, it took me 15 years to be sold on tweed, but I'm sold on it. And it's not, it's my first personal jacket in tweed is, and it, certainly not my last. And the last item I would like to share with you, and I promise I will not uh, spend a long time on this because I'm not a specialist. I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert, it's vintage watches. So I, I, I show this to this camera, maybe it doesn't matter if you see it or not, it's just because I just wanted to share with you the fact that you may or may not know that until 2019 I was um, an ambassador for Laurent Ferrier, the superlative watchmaker in Switzerland. And then COVID hits and strike uh, stroke a lot of business, you know, the orlogery uh, suffered, they're still very well alive because it's a great company. But uh, my contract with them as an ambassador was not renewed and I decided it was time for me to deep dive into something different. And I have a friend, which is a friend of a friend. Uh, it's called Panayotis Gregoriou. And Panayotis, I asked his help because I said, listen, Panayotis, I, I need your help because uh, I want to start my path as a young boy that I am on the vintage watch uh, market. But I don't know much about that. I, I have just an trained eye. I know what is elegant and what is not elegant. But um, I need your help. And uh, he sourced for me this beautiful watch. That I'm, that's my first vintage watch, but certainly not my last. It's an Angelus. Angelus has been reborn as a company a few years ago, but now that they do these massive skeleton watches, it has nothing to do with the original Angelus. And so it's from 1951, we think, we estimate 51, early 50s, uh, with several complications, including a moon phase, which is beautiful. But what I like the most on this vintage watch is that the, the size is reasonable. I have no idea, I think it's a 38, well, if I do, if I say 38 and if a 36 or 37, please don't, don't throw rotten tomatoes at me. I'm not a watch specialist, but it's a small dial. And okay, I have a kind of a tiny wrist, but still what I really dislike uh, in this world in the 21st century is people who are wearing this massive, you know, when the watch is two times the size of their, 
I'm not talking about sports watches that can be beautiful, but you know, this big thing that sometimes, you know what I'm talking about. And the people, when they shake your hand, they, they want you to look at their watch. This is not my definition of elegance. So I started my path in the vintage watch realm because it is a realm. I think, I know it can take a lifetime to start to find your way Specifically today, when you can so many secondhand shops, so eBay and so many places here, and you can go to source. This is why I decided to play it safe and go through my friend Panayotis, who knows this market very well because he's a collector of Omegas, he's a collector of different brands, uh, mainly from the 1930s, 40s, 50s. So I think it was a good help. And now I'm going to make my way little by little with the help of my wife inside this beautiful market. So that was my six discoveries in 2021. Uh, keep in mind that, um, well, um, life is in, is, uh, you can adapt. Humans, we have such an amazing capacity of adaptation. We can adapt to anything. And it's not because we have to stay at home. And it's not because the kind of relationship we have with the world and with other change that we have to forget to think about others when we dress up. And this is maybe the key message of this video. It was not planned like that, but it came like an intuition to me that so many people think that we are just dandies or are just self-centers and narcissists and everything. Well, there's probably a few. Uh, I'm not self-judging. I don't know if I'm a narcissist or not. I believe I am. I am not. I strongly believe I am not because I'm very interested in others. But the key is that when you dress, always have in mind Never overdress or never underdress. Always try to put a little bit of thoughts in the people you're going to meet during the day and you're going to see that the tutorial journey is a fantastic journey, whether you have to stay at home or you have to be outside or you have to do Zoom conference. It doesn't matter. This may be the ultimate Zoom conference item. I give you an appointment to the next episode of Tutorial Talks. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs>